that. But let me think now, now I'm sure, not sure, maybe it's the wrong words. So, we have to bring this down. This point on the side, we did it on someone, this chocante point, you take a red for go to the side of the common shoe, between the moon and the shoe points, usually does a good job for all of the I'm looking for Vegas and Frank um, possibilities. One, two, three, three. Okay, but we know this point doesn't do anything to, to release. So. In other words, no point in doing Sancho 8 again to release the neck. You know, because it didn't release the back. I'm not interested in releasing the neck like a second. She's kind of like um, she's like the five second person on the table. It's now a little more than five seconds, but it's like, no, 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 don't feel guilty. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, is that on four? Yes. And, and, and what point is that? 
Liver for liver for lung for usually when it, when it's a problem with the diaphragm usually that does a good job. Okay, try again to the back. Or the breathing. Still there. No change. Every lung it's still there doesn't mean anything to me. No change. No change. Say they say um, they were born with a certain conditions. I'm looking to see, do I have a point for that condition? Does that point condition um, make something in my mind? I'm trying to see if I can either invent a point or I know of a point or a point combination that addresses this issue in the past. And I want to see if it clears the abdomen and not just, now some issues if they say, I was born with, uh, you know, my lungs were filled with fluid, well, it's, it's not going to be a surprise if I find left, uh, right side stomach 26, 27. Okay, it's a lung reflex. Okay. I'm trying to see if I come up with a point that will address it, if it will clear the right. Say I decided lung 5 is a good point, you know, for whatever reason. For that. <coughs> I want to see if it's going to clear the, the rest of the abdomen also, not just the lung reflex. That means to me that that's a basic point. That's, that means that's where the person is stuck. So the, my process of thinking is always looking for where that person is stuck, you know, where their energy is stuck. And if I can tap into it and release it, I have a chance that the symptoms will get better. Okay? Then I move on. So I'm always looking for medical history, clearing the abdomen. Okay, when I say abdomen, that includes the neck and the throat. Yes, but many times you check the reflex on the legs on the heart somewhere, and you say, oh, this is a sensitive point. I would be a very happy person if we can do some real workshop and try each one of us to find work on the heart. But yeah. I, you won't get it from me, I'll tell you why. Because um, it's, it basically wastes everyone's time. Uh, honestly, because this you can do on your own. If I, if we now sat here and everybody started poking, I can't split myself in, you know, you, you do it in twos or threes, I can't split myself, you know, there'll be four, four groups. I can only work with one group and the energy of that, of that kind of class, everybody's going to gravitate to where I am and they're going to do what they do on, on their table, but they're really looking at me. So what happens is, in my experience, it's, I know it sounds like I'm feeling myself on <laughs> like this. Um, 
it's better if everybody watches it. You will have, there's certain things you're going to have to practice and discover for yourself. Because if I try and make this into a workshop, the energy disperses and we have such a short time, I can't, I, you know, if we had more time, I'm happy to spend an hour doing that. That's important. But I'm also happy for you to come on into the table and, and, and feel yourself, which we did, you know, yes. I keep telling you, come and do that. So, so just know, because what will happen is if you have this expectation, or you want it, you'll get frustrated, more and more frustrated. So if, if I tell you right away, listen, cut it off, don't worry about it, <laughs> then you have a better chance of getting what you, what you need. I, I do understand what you're saying. I have no expectation, yeah. by the way. Uh, but I do touch and palpate how I like. Mm -hmm. okay? Not necessarily part of punch, but to the shiasa. Mm -hmm. I can find, oh, today, with working with Tak and looking at the way he works, I can find sometimes the connection between releasing the specific point in the hara to a specific point in another place in the body. But it still does not give me any treatment plan. I said, okay, I push here, I do showing, okay, it's releasing it, but now what? So how do I continue? What is the process of making the whole treatment out of it? How do I, what is the next step? What is the next step after? Okay, what, let me ask I you this. Understand. Okay, you study TCM, right? I'm studying now. Okay. So um, in TCM they say you have, uh, whatever, spleen chi deficiency. Okay, you have spleen chi deficiency and dampness, and the uh, principal treatment is um, fortify the spleen, um, get rid of the dampness. Fair? Yeah. Okay, what do you do next? It normally gives you a combination of possibilities of what else you want to address except this problem, and then you're trying to catch more things which relate to the person general situation. Give me an example. So, so you did stomach 36 and spleen so 6 and also saying, Yeah, but I asked more symptoms. Like, okay, so how do you sleep? How do you live? Okay, no, no, you did, it. No, you did, all, you did all that. You asked your 10 questions. You arrived at a diagnosis. And now you, you have your diagnosis. They don't sleep well because they had spleen gene deficiency, blood deficiency, disturbing the sham, yak, 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 yak. Gui pitang, yak, 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 yak. And now, what do you do? You gave them gui pitang. What do you do now in TCM? You wait until they come back and say, wow, you're a great practitioner, I sleep great. Or they say, uh, can you change the formula, I hate it. Or, you know, it's too bitter or whatever, you know. It's the same thing, you know, it's like, you're making it, I'm sorry, I, I, you know, it's like, you're making it sound like you, you did whatever you did in whichever style you do and you wait and see what happens. In this case, you wait a little less time because if I clear the whole abdomen, you know, whether with one point or ten points or whatever, my job for that day is done. Now I wait, what happens when they come next week and they say, my symptoms are better, not better, they're 50% better, whatever. According to that, I then say, did I miss something? Remember, I told you, it's easy to clear the abdomen, relatively speaking. It's easy to clear the symptom, relatively speaking. The trick is to make it stick. Okay? Yeah. How you do that is by making sure you address the constitution. Now, I'm not going to know in advance whether I did it or not until we come back the next week. The person comes back the next week and says, everything is fine, I'm not coming again. You clear that. You're done. Your job is done. Bye-bye. Exactly. Bye. Their symptoms are gone. People come for symptoms. They don't come to entertain me. As much as I think they do, <laughs> they really don't. <laughs> okay. They came to solve a problem. The problem is solved. Bye-bye. The fact that the problem is solved on the table is not bye-bye yet, because it can come back. But if they come back the next week and the problem is solved, done. Now, there are exceptions to this. It was a rule, but this idea. If they come from menopause, and I can tell you that menopause is adrenal plus splenar and that, that. I can also tell you that if you don't treat for three months, it keeps coming back. So what happens is, and I tell people, women with menopause, kind of college today, right? Um, you have to come for three months pretty regularly. If it's okay if you went on vacation, but if you don't come for three months, and they all do this in four weeks or five weeks, depending on the person, somewhere between four to six weeks, they're gonna, or sometimes three, they're going to say, my hot flashes are gone. Can I reduce to once every two weeks? And I'm telling them in advance, the answer is no. And every single one, every single one says, after four or five weeks. But my hot flashes are really gone. I can come every two weeks. <laughs> Fine, do what you, the hell you want. 
just know that I told you you need to come once a week for three months. And then three weeks later, who's to blame? I'm to blame because my hot flashes are back and I'm a back practitioner. Every single one. This is the nature of menopause. They don't, you know, it, it's, I don't know whether it's the money, the time, the, I don't know what it is, but it's, it's a constant battle because if I tell people in advance three months, they say yes, and then they, when it comes to it, they say no. You need to add a point for that. <laughs> when, when you figure out the point, <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> It's a, so some things you can't say, okay, it's gone, because you know it will come back. The other thing is, you always have to be careful with symptoms that come and go. Some symptoms, if they come and go, if, if you yo-yo it too many times, they won't go away again. You can only play so many times with it. The body, you know, the body can adjust to no pain, yes pain, or discomfort, or whatever, whatever the problem is. So many times, I never know how many, maybe 100, maybe 20, maybe only twice, if you take the problem away and it comes back. Watch out not to do this too many times. Not to, you know, you want to take the problem and leave it away. Keep be consistent at that point. Okay, because if you don't, the body starts yo-yoing and then it gets used to this yo-yo thing. So you got you got a new pattern. Okay, which is not a good pattern. But how do you? By be at least you, all you can do is try to be consistent. I mean, there isn't a point for everything. So all I'm saying is, that, like you said, okay, I found something and the Shaolin point is a great job. Well, we usually don't just use one point. We use a, you know, we, that, like, I, there was someone yesterday, I said, I don't want to clear, this point did a great job clearing the abdomen. I said, wait, I want to see what else clears the abdomen. So I take insurance, okay? I do everything that I can that I think is relevant for this person, okay? And then what next? I don't know. I can't know <laughs> because, do you see what I'm saying? There is no way to know until the person comes back and reports. Okay. Then what, if they report, you know, this was a really shitty treatment, everything looked good on the table, but, you know, when I went home, everything came back and blah, 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 blah. I mean, first they don't know everything came back because they don't pop it after me, but say the symptom came back, whatever. Okay, then I go, okay, my, the way I was thinking was not correct. I have to change it. But if they come back and say, Everything is great. It's sixty percent better, and you know it was ninety percent better, then eighty percent better, and now it's sixty percent better. You go, okay, I'm on a pretty good track. Some things take time. Okay. If they say now it's only twenty percent better, you're going to, now. You have to think: Is it because it's a really intractable thing that really needs more pushing in the same way I push, or do I need to go the back door? Okay. So again, so if, if I'm going well, gee, you know this was not a great job. So I repalpate, I rethink, I try something new, I try and see, can I find something else that's going to push it better? But I can't tell which one is the best thing until they come back. It's a trial and error. So there isn't like, if you have this finding in the abdomen, this is the best point. I can tell you this is the dogma, that this was what clears it. But will it really stay cleared? First of all, will it clearly to clear it for this particular person? Maybe yes, maybe no. Let's say it cleared it. Looks good right now. Is it the real solution? I don't know until they come back. All I can tell is it looks good. We're doing well up to now. Let's see what happens next. You know? And that's why you have another chance in the back. To, to, to look again and see again. You know, I mean, in any profession that you're in, medically speaking, a person comes, you do something, and then you go, how many times you've seen, you see someone second, third, fourth, maybe tenth time, you go, oh my god, I was a total idiot, this is totally not the problem. It happens all the time. You know, suddenly, one day you watch them walk, and you go, how could I have missed this? They're like totally lopsided, blah, 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 blah. It's like, well, you, did, it, you didn't see. It, it's okay. So, I can't... I can't force myself to to do everything perfectly. I just I do the best I can, and you know, like everybody else, there are days that I do pretty well, and there are days that are kind of like it's kind of embarrassing. You know, and everybody's embarrassing level is a little different, but you know, it's like it doesn't always work. I mean, you know, I mean, you you you're you're sitting with Tom, I mean, you're you're helping talk on Tuesday, let's say. Okay, is every Tuesday, the, is it exactly the same? Some people, one Tuesday, everybody gets better, 
One Tuesday, everybody goes, yeah. Yeah. is it the weather? Is it him? Did, 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 he, did he drink too much beer the, the night before? Did he did not have enough coffee that morning? Did, did his kid piss him off? Did you piss him off? Uh, how, do you, how do we know? Yeah. Our job is, is just to do. And then, you know, we are not determining what someone else's fate is going to be. This is a very difficult situation for practitioners. We're put in a position where we're supposed to know everything, we're supposed to be able to do everything and help everything, and we're not. We're just human beings on the path, like everybody else. But we're schlepping like everybody else. In terms of like, you know, the patient comes back, and do you give a lot of self-care recommendations? For instance, stack hardly, well, he has a few, but... Yeah, I do, but you know, the things you have to understand, I'm a, I'm a Westerner, okay? People will never come to me in the same way that they will come to an Asian person, where it's totally acceptable. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you a great, a great example. Someone who's not alive, so it's easy. So I'm, I'm not uh, speaking ill of someone who's, you know, you know so nobody can take offense. This woman came with her husband to Miriam Lee, maybe 20 years ago, I can't remember, it was a long time ago. And I can't remember even what the husband had. But then the woman, Miriam was not someone who talked to people. You know, like most Asians don't talk a lot to the patients. That's just not the culture. And whereas it's not acceptable in our culture. And at the end of the treatment, you know how it is, the older, older couple and the woman is always the one asking the questions, right? The guy doesn't care. He probably wouldn't have been there without the wife. And at the end of the treatment, the woman asks Miriam, um, she wants to know what he should eat. You know, like what kind of diet he should have. Well, it's a totally standard question for us. Okay, like you would come up with something, you have chocolate on your pan. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, then Miriam said, so Miriam, I can see like Miriam going, oh, well, Fuck. You know, I was like, what am I supposed to do with this? I don't care what he eats. You know, it's a, and then she goes, I don't know what struck her, but she literally, I am quoting, she said, Big bird flies over blue lake. <laughs> I have no clue what she wanted to say. I have no clue what, what it was. If it has a, a, a metaphor food, does it mean he should eat chicken? She should eat fish? He should. He should eat blue foods. I, I have no clue what this meant. The woman lit up. <laughs> like she, ju you, she just discovered, you know, Elvis Presley and her, she just won the lottery. It didn't matter. Miriam Lee gave her something. It sounded like some quote from the I Ching or something. <laughs> the woman was happy. I don't know what the guy ate afterwards. <laughs> I have no clue. But, can you? I mean, can you see me do this? It's like it's imp it's not possible. I I you know people expect me to, to speak in their own language. It doesn't matter. Even you, you fr well in Canada, it's, it's, they just think you're we have a quasi or it's okay. But it doesn't matter how much you tell them I'm not from your culture. I'm not. I, you know I'm different. You know you. They we look like everybody else here, and we're expected to speak the language. If you're an Asian practitioner in Chinese medicine, if you're an Asian practitioner in Western medicine, it's not the same. You don't have that advantage. There is a certain quote-unquote advantage that a lot of us Western practitioners resent. It makes the life very easy in some ways. On the other hand, it also makes up, if we work like that, we probably will be very happy. You know, it's a choice. I tell my students, when you do this technique, do not talk to people too much beforehand. I can do it. I have a lot of experience. I can talk to people, do psychotherapy, yuck, 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 blah, 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 and then I can get them on the table and stop moving them. Okay. If most of you at the stage of your act right now, later on is different. If you're going to try and talk to someone and sort of do this whole Western method that we do with, with, with you know, therapist patient sort of situation, and then you try and move energy with, you know, like get them. It, it, remember, I do consider this to be somewhat invasive, somewhat aggressive. It's not horrible. They need to be present, and they can't sort of like go into la la land about you know the psycho spiritual or whatever. Yuck, 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 yuck. They, this doesn't work well like that. That's when they start processing. That's when their mouth. I need to talk from their fascia to the mouth. 
I don't want anything in between, or as little as possible in between. Okay. So for most of you, if you do too much talking, too much advice giving before you get them on the table, chances are when, when you're on the table, they're going to piss you off. They're not going to tell you what's going on. They're going to be slow. They're going to want to control what's going on. They can't. They, they have one place to control. It's still painful. It's not painful. Mm -hmm. How much? That's their control. But if they're starting to like, oh, I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. You can't. It's very hard to work like that. You know, drill, it, you know, and it also takes a long time. So my suggestion to people is if you have an established style already, Start combining a few tricks and do a little bit of poking. Don't, at the beginning, tell the patient you're trying to clear the directory. Because if you can't, you look bad. Okay? You're just poking like you're taking the pulse. I mean, you know, if you're TC enter. Like you're taking the pulse, now you're poking. You know, a big deal. And start utilizing a little bit until you get, you know, you start getting more confident and then slowly you can switch all together over time. But if you try and switch immediately, um, just be careful. I'm totally for you switching all together. For most people, will switch a little bit. Like, wow, a unicorn's really cool. You know, I'll try this. You know, like they'll pick up a few tricks and little by little, you, you know, one class is not enough. One class is enough for people who are really committed and that they're convinced in their head they love this style for whatever reason. They read something. They heard my name. They heard Kiko's name. Whatever it is. You know, they really want it, and then they'll be emailing me every day, and they'll, be, you know, they'll get what they want. But for the app, for regular person, slowly, slowly, it's okay. It, most people, you know, really, they need, it takes a few years to really feel like, okay, this, I really resonate, I need to be able to say it. So it's okay. So it'll take you a few years. So keep going to Kiko, keep, keep going to classes, you'll gain more and more. You can't get it all at once. But in terms of food, so yes, I do give people advice, but the style is not about that. You know, and I, I would suggest that the moment that, the moment you start doing more of this, do a little less talking. Try and move them towards the table as fast as you can. Talk to them after if you need. Does that make sense? Does did that kind of answer your question, or just yeah. frustrated you? <laughs> no, you're not. You're not frustrating. I, I just. I'm appreciating if you would share with us the way you think when you look for points. And I would like to know, since again I'm very limited in my knowledge in acupuncture, if there is any clear relationship or any tablets or any whatever, a tableau that uh, are connecting between different association areas, to which would be your first or second option oh, to yeah. try to read so to look, it out? Go to my website. And there's a, there's a file called uh, body template, and you'll find all these associations. You know, the, this reflex, this is the treatment point. This is the treatment point for these reflex. I mean, it works both ways. So you'll you'll see this point. These are the treat. You know, like every single point, or every, not every single point, but you know, every area and its correspondences. It's a little bit on the old side, but it, so if you're looking, and it's about seven pages, uh, and you'll have enough correspondences to keep you busy for a while. Great, thank so, you. Yeah, so if you're looking for that, yes. And, yeah, is that, is that? Yeah, thank you. Anyone else? Does she, is she called? Or? Oh, oh, this one, okay. So I told you, liver for lung, for, liver for lung for usually goods for breakfast. She had, okay. you had here, right? Yeah. Is it still there? It's still there, but it's, it's maybe a second or something. Usually for spleen area, you know, if this was liver, I have liver issues. Splenary, we take do 20 and go halfway between the do and the gallbladder channel and we'll find a dent and that releases that. No, I'm not going to call it malaria point because the spleen is affected by malaria. The truth is you can also do it on the right side for the diaphragm on the right side, okay? But originally it's on the, originally it's on the left side, um, specifically for the spleen. It's a spleen point. So, you know, for example, if you're uh, people who are... Um, that their spleen was ruptured in a car accident or something like that because you know here you're not going to get a lot of malaria. I'm sure they have those people that don't think they have malaria. Yes. Maria, I think they missed a step there. You were determining that her her diaphragm was off by a spleen palpation. No, no, no. Okay. 
what she um, she came and she said, I did these abdominal um, breathing exercises and, and I feel like my diaphragm is weird. Okay. And so I said, oh, well, let's see what we can do. Um, that, that's how we started. But when I, I poked the diaphragm itself, because I'm trying to poke the diaphragm, on the right side, no problem. On the left side, there were some. Actually, we thought originally it was on the right side because I felt, she said around T5, T7. Mm. She could, and it was actually on the right side. But when I needled right side, nothing really moved. And then the left side made it. You know, 50% better. Yeah, except it's gone back to what it was now. And that was with needling. That patient was <laughs> <laughs> That was with needling uh, lung for the book. Yeah. So, okay. So, actually, no, no, no. You're a very good patient. So, this is a perfect example. I told you I specifically didn't, need, didn't do the abdomen just to show you a bunch of tricks. Okay? So, this shows you, okay, you do something, you think something worked and then, you know, it will come back, because what, what happened? You took the top layer and you, you, you sort of like, you know, you peeled it, and then underneath there's this storm still happening underneath. Until you deal with the storm and with a problem underneath, the top layer can always come back. Smoothing the waves at the top of the ocean is, is useless. Okay, you've, you've got to deal either with the wind or the tsunami underneath. Okay, if you don't deal with what's with the with the cause, okay, right now waves are fine. Everything looks beautiful. Okay, fifty percent better, not beautiful, whatever. And then if you know, then the tsunami keeps going. Okay, so you you've gotta you've gotta deal with you know, that's why you've got to Yes. So left stomach twenty seven. And the other thing is, you saw when she breathes, it comes out. Maybe she's probably an autonomic nervous system type. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit by the pulse, not super, super clear. Um, yeah, somewhat clear. Okay. So you see, if you don't, you, and you should, it took me only two minutes to do that. Let's. So again, what did you find? I found, okay, I found lung reflex or digestive reflex, I'm not sure, but left, uh, right stomach 27. I found REN 9 and pulsing and REN 15. So just like very super, now, part of it, I have to admit, that part of it, after she got on the table, I saw, I looked at her and I went, okay, okay, this is not, you know, she's one of those, you know, nothing's going to work so, so quickly for her because she's probably out of the nervous system time. I, I, you know, now I'm doing it, but it's not this one, it's the red 9 and red 15. Right stomach 27 is not related to the autonomic nervous system. So now I'm thinking, okay, maybe she's a spleen 3 pericardi 4 type, just for the sake of it. Yeah, that's right. you, you didn't ask her whether it was painful, so it's mainly your... I didn't ask her if it's what? Um, yeah, it was mainly what you No, she said it. yes. No, she, she responded. Okay. But yeah, you can use the system by just making it, you know, figuring out from your own fingers. You can. I, I suggest not to do it for a while. How's your back? And now, yeah. no, oh, let's turn but, it over. You know, because I know that the studies of, about gynecology, I'm happy to just... Move. It's totally up to you. I, I don't want She's to take you off the topic. Sorry? You, you were going to come, you, you were going to be the next patient, right? Oh, yeah, sure. And that's what was my understanding. Right? Great. Okay. I'm a tough okay. case, though. Oh. Ooh. It's really good right there. <laughs> okay, let down freestyle. I don't like it when people get out of the table like this. It's not very pleasant. The thing is, I also kind of palpate her, her actual problem. That's, that's the other part of it. In this position, you can, you can create a pain? Yeah. Okay, is it more on the right or more on the left, by any chance? It is, honestly. It feels right hand Okay. So since I think she's out of the nervous system, let's try to two. And then we'll try sacred area. Yeah? And then we'll keep going. Okay. Um, how's now? And where is the pain? Around uh -huh. here. I, I couldn't pop it before. That's why I'm not going to try. Uh, maybe. 100% <coughs> um, correct. 20% better. Let me just try it down one. Okay, go again. Now she's trying to go over here. Did you do that thing when you
when she speeds up, speeds up, press that point and get her to. Yeah, no, but my pressing didn't produce a whole. Didn't produce a No change. No change. So still 20%. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, how's now? See, her whole paraspinals are, are making an effort here. Um, better by maybe 30%. Okay. okay. So sacroiliac, because anything to do with the paraspinal, so if they have a valley bank, I tend to do sacroiliac. Without moving, you can feel it. Yeah. Would that constitute sugar? No, not necessarily, but maybe. Um, no, I mean, the, the thing, okay, because I, okay, first you said you had to move to make it, and then, see, the autonomic nervous system type always, the story always develops. <laughs> no, it's, it's the No, you know, but the, the longer I stay in a while, the, yes, the, I understand. the more okay. uncomfortable it yeah. becomes. Um, yeah, but that's. That can be also because a muscle is. Um, whoops. How is it there? Um, it's still there. Still there is not yeah, an um, <laughs> Try. Yes. <laughs> you can come down. Just let me know what's, what's going on. I'd say it's maybe about full, still thirty to forty percent better. It okay. just feels like a huge bruise, so it's really difficult to. It's not like isolated in one particular area. Okay. No, no, no. It's, it's okay. But you just tell me what's going on. It feels like a bruise. I tried OD because she said it's um, OD is like between on the right side from the navel to the ribs, 45 degrees, halfway. We call OD sphincter point, and that's when they have bruise pain. We use that. Okay. So I'll try here. Okay. Okay. And now. Worse. Mm -hmm. Okay. By how much? I don't have to even move, but your pressure, I can feel it all the way up my spine. Okay, because I'm pressing on, on the muscle. Okay, gotcha. Was that true? Yeah, yeah. Because she said it's like a bruise. So, but the thing is, I'm pressing on the muscle now. That the whole pair of spinals are, are, are difficult for. Okay. Okay, and now. <coughs> no change. No change. Okay. Alright. Most black is that bladder 35. 35. Yeah, because I'm trying to get the, the, the you know, kind of like the root okay, well we could try the uh, five there. Mm -hmm. Do you have an extra vertebra? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Not that have a very long way to start on this. Okay. And try again. No change. No change. Okay. Okay, I know it's weird to, to do this now, but try and spike my pressure. No change. No change. It's okay, I'll just get you off the table. <laughs> <laughs> How's now? They don't like have a trick for well. If somebody comes and they have you know you know especially when they come and they can't quite define you know. So there, there's no reflex here. I mean there are reflexes on the abdomen, but um, okay, okay. But they may not reflect the fact that she has a tight muscle. Just reflect mm -hmm. the fact that she can that she's going to be slow. 
I'm right now. No, I'm right now just trying to find a way to release the muscle because I already missed my opportunity to treat the constitution. So I'm sorry. Is there any clear muscle points in the body or for muscles? Yeah, spleen three didn't do anything for her. Spleen three is for muscle spasms. So we'll try one more. <coughs> Rent 12 for muscles? No. For the back? For the morph, yeah, if it's clearly the spine, but in my opinion, even though she says she, says she felt on, on the spine, but just watching what's going on, it's the, it's the muscles. So. Okay, try again. Just out of interest, have you tried uh, again? Hmm? Have you tried immune points? So. No, that's why. Okay, try again. Sorry, I thought it was annoying. Um, I'd say still about 40%. Okay, so I'm, I'm releasing these points. Uh, is it still 40%? Okay, so You asked me about intradermals. Yeah. Intra right. Sorry. Intradermals are not, Prestex are just, you know, they're like a thumbtack. And intradermal is different. You, intradermal is meant to go with, um, yeah. Prestex goes this way in the skin, intradermal goes this way in the skin. I was, I was talking about the little stickers that they have a little pin in there and then you. you then those are called Prestex. Prestex. So that's what these okay. are. Okay. Prestex. Yeah. Okay. And you're putting it on the palace? Yes. Could put a magnet on. But, you know, let's see what happens. Um, let's have you sit up. Because we can't fix you. <laughs> you seem to be moving a little yeah. better. Okay, when you walk, put your weight on your feet, how's now? Um, it's okay, tell me the truth. It's, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I do care. Sore. Okay. I'd say probably not all that much different than okay. than started. But yeah, it, but it's also just lying prone that. Oh, aggravates it. I think so. Yeah, because when I start moving around, I don't notice it as much as just when I do these sort of little movements and that. Mm -hmm. Have you tried heat? No. Okay. What do you mean for? Oh, you mean like just like a. Hot. Well, well, not a hot pack. Um, something that will penetrate. A hot pack only warms up the skin. Right. No, I haven't. I have those plasters that home afterwards. Okay. Or do you have a microwave? Yeah. Okay. Take a sock, fill it with rice, put it right. in the microwave for four or five minutes, okay. and lie on it. Okay. But don't put your skin on it. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 because at the beginning it's very warm. Okay. Let's see if that helps. Are you okay? Oh, yeah. You sure? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, so about the diaphragm, when you're, when you're, if you want to do it, you want to do it, you want to do it, you want One I only do it myself. When you're palpating for the, uh, the diaphragm, is it different than how you're palpating for the lip? No. No. Because what you really, I mean, I normally don't pop it for diaphragm, it's just a <coughs> she's stuck. Okay. 
the, 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 the evolution of this is, is this. She, she started to, she asked, is it possible to pull the diaphragm? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I said yes. And then it started evolving and then it, you know, so it's kind of like, you know, we know it has something to do with breathing, but actually I'm not sure if it has to do with breathing or the abdomen or, you know, because I think that it's really coming, you know, maybe stomach 30 will do a good job for her body right now. That so, you know, the whole case was kind of like not a well, yeah. <laughs> you know, because everything kept shifting and changing. So yeah. it's, it's not the way you deal with a patient, basically. Yeah. You know? So that was not the um, best way to do it. Okay, let's take the next portion. Okay. Oh yeah. See if just try to see if she oh, yeah. Okay. Here. Yeah. Sitting up is good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> she is she is a little sensitive, so <laughs> oh. from this position. Oh do you want to go ahead? Yes, why should I over here? So far. Okay. 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 Actually, you know what? I think it's a good exercise to be able to be able to say no. I'm just being bad. All right. <coughs> Do you want to come in? Yeah. Abby, is it possible maybe to ask a question before you get into the next yeah. case? Just yesterday, regarding and a little bit to touch on uh, Yellen's question, some of the experienced practitioners that you spent time with in uh -huh. terms of contrasting and comparing their, their thinking. In general, as general as you can, of course. Um, to give us like a bumper sticker version. Oh, in and out. Okay. Mr. Toy Hari. Okay. <laughs> okay. If you're gonna be Mr. Toy Hari, can you take this leg back? I'm not well, I'm trying to be anything. No, no, no. I'm yes. just. <laughs> it's just you. You. A little hunched on that. Mm, so yeah. it will help you if, if if you could get a little bit more mm. wider legs and you'll have a little bit more freedom. Mm. Personally, mm -hmm. I find it's easier for me to kneel when you on this way. From the top here? No. Okay. Sometimes a very good point for small intestine area between the shoulder blades and everything. So it's just easier for me to do it from the front rather than. One thing about needles for me, it's always easier. Because you don't want to do UB1 with a needle dangling over her eye, right? It's not very pleasant. So he's, he's trying to get the needle to, to stand in this direction, right? Okay, as opposed to here. It's always easier to pull a needle towards you than to push a needle away. Okay? That's why, from a position perspective, it's easier for me to do mm -hmm. this okay. than to do that. Mm -hmm. that that's it. Okay. Yeah, and it's, it's good. Don't, don't take it too seriously. Um, there's another one? I've got one here. Uh, God, the different people. Everyone does something different. Everybody, you know, they're all extremely, extremely different. And at the same time, they're all the same. <coughs> you know, it's, um, you know, Jeffrey's way of working is very um, philosophical. It's very gentle with people. He doesn't force himself on people. And at the same time, he's totally capable of saying to someone, oh, you're possessed by an entity. And they will totally open up to it and like go, oh yes, <laughs> you know, they love that. <laughs> Even um, for, let's say, a simple musculoskeletal issue? Uh, it's irrelevant what it's for, because it's, if they're possessed by, if you think, so you're possessed by an entity, that's what happens, you know. Uh, you know? Uh, but you may not, do you want to remain prone? No, I, I thought that was not comfortable. Yeah, because you're going to be doing some demonstrations now. Right? Yeah, you, you can, yeah. And how is that on the back? Um. <laughs> she doesn't want to say it's 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 the same. Never mind. <laughs> but I like these points. But yeah, <laughs> and they look cool. keep them. Yeah. <laughs> keep them. Um, Miriam was very rough with people. 
I don't think Miriam ever heard of a needle that was less than two inches long. I mean, that was the smallest needle. And they were probably, well, they may have been as thick as the sky jib, I'm exaggerating, but they were not thin. And they were rusty. <laughs> it was the autoclavable age. <laughs> so, um, she was a rough person, and she had, but the thing that she had about her, I mean, I would say that all, all three of these people um, had a very strong way of uh, convincing people that you know that they they were strong people, you know that, you know in their own way, and I think that's one of the things that are really really important. Do you know that Ted Kapchak's interest nowadays that he's for the last seven or eight years he's only interested in placebo and ph pharmaceutically um, producing it. I'm sure he's producing placebo. Well, that's because he, he has a grant from Harvard. Somebody's got to make money out of the placebo. But, you know, the, whether you're pharmaceutically producing it, whether you're producing it by your personality or whatever, you know, placebo is a very strong thing. So I think that I would say that every good practitioner I've ever seen has a very, either very strong personality or very strong convincing power through something. So in Jeffrey's case, it's not his personality. It's more, you know, he's a, he is the Taoist priest, he's Mr. Jeffrey, you and, uh, you know, it's like people go to him like they go to God. You know, please tell me what my destiny is. You know, so he doesn't have to convince you of anything, you're already convinced that, you know, he's, I, I'm not saying it in a bad way, but, you know, so, as a practitioner, producing a certain effect of uh, trust and you will get better is very important. And again, this is something that some of us, as Western people, are not comfortable with. You know, I personally am not comfortable with that. I'm, I'm not here to tell people what will happen to them. That's not what... Now, it's very interesting because Jeffrey will always say, we're not here to determine people's justice. We're not here to tell them what to do. We're, and he totally does it. <laughs> you know, it's like theoretically he tells you that that's not what you're supposed to do and you, it's not your role, etc., etc., etc. And I've seen him with patients. And that's exactly what he does. In a very gentle, it's very subtle, and it's totally there at the same time. So I think to again to sort of emphasize how how much that support is useful to people. Yes, you're providing them space and light, and you're also providing them, you're channeling them towards a particular place. How much um, empowerment do you personally use in your style, patient empowerment? Because I'm sure you see a lot of, you know, my life is this and life yeah. is terrible, a lot of victimization. Oh, oh, you're talking about that's kind of empowerment, okay. In ter just even in terms of, okay, well, you can do this <coughs> every day and make these kinds of changes, and then all of a sudden they feel they I have control. So it's the same question, yeah. A little I bit. do uh, lifestyle changes, whatever. Yeah, I do a lot of it, but that's, um, but it has nothing to do with technique. And when I teach, I try and teach technique, even though I'm sort of poo-pooing it and I'm kind of like saying, well, forget the technique, it's really something else. But ultimately, I can't teach you anything except technique. You know, so, um, yeah, I, I do a lot more than, you know, certainly a lot more than Kiko and I presume Tak, from what, you know, what you just said. Um, so yeah, I mean that's that's a big area. That's a lot of what I do, but it's also partially that. Um, well, you asked me yesterday. I, you know, um, I told you that this phrase that Jeffrey said to me that at one point that you know you'll you'll see a world where well, there's a few phrases. You know, one day you will see a world where nobody needs to come to to you. You will have no patience because nobody needs to come to you, and that's a very strange thing. You know, but I I really th I see that c coming more and more. Uh, there was a time when if I didn't do acupuncture, it would have been a terrible thing in my life. So it doesn't matter to me. It's no big deal. Um, also, one of the other phrases he used to say was, uh, the true acupuncturist doesn't need any needles, which is actually true about him nowadays. He doesn't use needles anymore. And I sort of see that also. I mean, it's very convenient for me to use needles uh, or physical medicine or whatever. But I'm also doing, you know, I also do other stuff. I mean, you know, th this is only part of what I do in my life. I mean, the way this is everything I do in my life, on the other hand, uh, I'm, I'm also, you know, dealing, you know, like, um, I'm looking at what is the psycho-spiritual um, path of myself and of people. So that, that's the other aspect of what I do. Um, and I, 
the truth is I shouldn't need needles for that at all. You know, so I'm not, I'm not the best example for pure technique with needles. If you ask me what do I do, because I do both. You know, and I'm just as um, involved in both worlds. So, but if you talk about this particular world, then no, you, you're, um, I mean, the, in, traditionally in China there are three different professions. There is the physician, there's the shaman, and there's the teacher. And these are three separate different kinds of people. They are not supposed to be mixed. The physician is not supposed to be a spiritual teacher. And the shaman is not a spiritual teacher either. A shaman is one who... Um, a shaman is a person who can communicate across, across the veil with, and between heaven and earth. Okay, that's what a shaman is. They are not here to teach you anything. They are here to communicate. They are here to... Um, it's a little confusing because then you get this other possibility. If anybody speaks Chinese, I'm sorry. Um, I don't do the characters by order. Okay, this is Ling. Okay? Spiritual, like Ling Shu. Okay, so you see the shaman here. So there's, but there's, there's, okay, so you know, then you can say, oh, well, the shaman is something spiritual. The shaman simply does the communication across the veils, okay? In, in Ling, what you have is, it's like something from heaven, the rain that comes down, and the mounts of the shamans calling to bring down rain, okay? This, this, it's the ability to, to call the spirits to bring down the rain. So, a shaman is really, all they're doing is communicating. You know, they're not a teacher. It's like if you go to read your poem, you may learn something, but they're, they're just communicating. Okay, this is what your astrological sign says, you know, something like that. They're, they're not there to teach you. A spiritual teacher is a very different story. They're there to hold you, to take your suffering and hold it until you find the space to understand your life. Okay? And the physician is there to take away the pain. They're not there to teach you, they're, not, they're just there to take away the pain. Therefore, the way the Asians work, 